guys, we're dropping in midweek to do a little bit of stuffed bakes. I know that the cooking stuff might not be for everybody, so if it's not for you, feel free to click on out of this video and you can join us back on Friday for our regular scheduled episode. But if you're into this sort of thing, then keep watching and welcome to the Gypsy Galley. I've actually featured this bread in a recipe back from the Bahamas, episode number 20. So you can feel free to click that right there to see the basis of the recipe. I'm not going to show how I make that dough because it is all documented in that video. I'm going to show you the three additional ways that we use the dough. I've also used it for bagels, for cheesy bread, and for donuts. So this recipe has been great for all four things. The only minor tweaks I've had to make would be adding maybe an eighth to a quarter cup of flour more than what the recipe normally calls for because the dough might be a little bit stickier and it's really just adjusting the flour to get the same consistency but nonetheless it's worked so far. I also want to preface with the fact that I kind of just eyeball everything so I don't know the exact number of minutes that I'm leaving um, the dough to proof for and how long I'm leaving it in the oven because every time I make it I'm making a different amount and the sizes of the bagels or the donuts or the cheesy bread might be a little bit different. Once the bread is golden brown, I kind of know that that's when it's ready. Got my dough all ready. It's risen for about half an hour because it's quite humid in the Caribbean. And we know it's done because you poke it, the indentations stay. So to make bagels, I'm going to just take the dough and roll it into tubes and form circles. I find this to be easier than cutting them out. You really pinch the seam together so it doesn't split and separate when you leave them to rise for another like 10 minutes or so depending on how humid it is. Try to avoid any air bubbles. As symmetrical as I can. are probably going to be super small but it's because I'm trying to save the dough and make some other stuff. And now our bagels have puffed up a little bit and they can go in the oven. So I don't know how accurate the temperature gauge is on our oven. It's a force 10 but I usually set it anywhere from 350 to 375 and just keep an eye on it when I'm baking. When it's golden brown that's pretty much when I know it's done. There we have it. I actually forgot to put dill. We like dill. So I just brushed some olive oil and then I'm gonna season it now. And they're perfectly crispy on the bottom. Flatten out the dough into like a rectangle and roll it out. as even as possible. Kind of like when you're making the bread loaf. I'm going to brush it with some olive oil. It doesn't have to be too much. It's just to make some of the seasoning stick a little bit better. powder and all of this is just to your preference so you can add as much as you want or as little as you want add additional things tweak it whatever flavors you like I also like a little bit of oregano in it, so I'll do that as well and now the best part loading it up with cheese and you can use whatever cheese you like we are just using sharp cheddar cheese. I'm just shredding it with the finest um, grate, I guess. These ones are a little bit thick. And I found that when I do the um, like braiding of it, when the cheese is too thick, it kind of falls apart a little bit easier. So I've been grating it pretty fine and it works better for me.
And then I just sprinkle some onions on it. I have minced dehydrated onion because we don't have any fresh green onions, but I usually like putting fresh green onions on if we have them. And next we're gonna roll it up lengthwise. So this way, kind of like how you would roll up a loaf of bread or how you would roll up cinnamon buns, same thing. And again, you might want to just pinch the seams really tight to make sure that they don't separate when it sits to rise again for like 10, 15 minutes or so. Usually when it rises, it's when the seams start to pop and things start falling apart. And I like to pinch the sides too, so nothing falls out there. Just roll it a bit. And now what you want to do to do the braiding is you either want to take a really sharp knife and I don't know, just depending on how sticky your dough is, because sometimes when the dough is super sticky, I don't have luck with slicing it because it just gets all stuck and all the filling comes out. I have just been using scissors and I've found that I've had better luck with slicing with scissors. Really want to make sure that seam is closed first. And then I just cut right in the middle. You can see all the stuff on the inside. Like, see what I mean? If you use a knife, sometimes it might get stuck and then you end up pulling the filling out, which is not good. So I just use scissors. And just kind of flip it outwards to avoid stuff falling out as best as I can. This is the fun part though, because I love making it look kind of pretty. Slice it almost all the way, leaving maybe like three quarters of an inch or so on one end. And then you can just braid it. Oh crap, stuff starts falling. So you just want to carefully twist it. Oops. It's kind of the tricky part here, but when it bakes, it'll still look nice. It's pretty forgiving. There you go. You just over, under, over, under. And then at the end, just pinch that seam close together as well. Now it's up to you whether you want to bake it as is in kind of like a long braided baguette shape or if you want to put it into a loaf pan and make it kind of like loafy. Oh wait, I gotta oil the pan if I do that. So yeah, you want to make sure you oil the pan so stuff doesn't get all like stuck. Oops, that's a lot of oil. That's way too much oil. Okay, whatever. Be super crispy. Or it just won't get stuck. I don't know. So whether you are gonna be baking it on a cookie sheet long or shoving it into a bread pan, cover it and leave it for about 10, 15 minutes until it rises a bit. For us, it's 10, 15 minutes, mind you, because we're in really humid weather. But um, I don't know, probably half an hour if you're not in really high humidity. Once it's puffed up a little bit and risen, I'm gonna stick it in the oven for about 25 minutes because it's a smaller loaf, pretty much until it's golden brown. Now we're gonna make donuts out of this dough. The donuts aren't gonna be overly sweet because it is just the same bread recipe, but once you put the icing on it, it makes it sweet enough, at least for us anyways, and we like them. To form the donuts, you can either form them the same way we did with the bagels, or if your dough isn't too sticky, you can roll it out. Flatten it to about a centimeter. Take a glass. Take like a bottle cap. Mm. 
cover these and let them rise until they get poofy. Again, I just eyeball everything. I don't get too like nitpicky with the timing. I just kind of look at it and if it looks about done, it's done. You just want them to poof up. So for me, it's about 10, 15 minutes once again. Now that the donuts have risen to about double, we can fry them. I have vegetable oil in a pot. And I'm gonna be getting the icing ready as well because you gotta ice them while they're still hot. For the icing, I'm just making a simple vanilla glaze. Just melt butter with some vanilla extract and the icing sugar, water. So depending on how much you need, I just keep adjusting it by adding a little bit more icing sugar, maybe a little bit more water until I get the consistency and the sweetness that I want. You can't really screw it up. Um, it's pretty forgiving. You can just keep adding stuff to adjust. Because I'm not making too many donuts, I don't want to make too much, so that's why there isn't very much here. You want it to be thin, but you don't want it to be liquidy. You want to keep it on like a low heat just so that it stays liquidy and the icing sugar doesn't start to solidify. While it's still hot, you want to put it in the icing, coat it. If you're adding sprinkles, you want to do it right away before the icing hardens. You can also experiment with the vanilla by adding different flavors. Like this time, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon in it to make it cinnamony. Ooh. Comes a run in when they're ready. I smelt them. Okay, so we have vanilla sprinkles, vanilla, cinnamon. They were supposed to be poop to see if it would deter <laughs> you from eating it. I was gonna go for that one first. But now they're funny looking, so um, cinnamon icing on the rest. Uh. Verdict? Tastes just like the CNA. <laughs> There go. Good. I'm glad I swallowed. I feel less guilty that way. Mm. They're good. <laughs> I mean, anytime I can get a donut way out here in the water, in the middle of nowhere, I'm pretty pumped. Get it at home. If I want a donut, I gotta beg you for one. Hard life you got, eh? Mm-hmm. And there you have it, guys. Four different ways to use the same bread recipe to make sliced bread, bagels, cheesy bread, and donuts. If you end up trying the recipe, I would love to hear how it went for you. Please leave a comment below. And if you do like this sort of video midweek, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And we will see you back on Friday for our regular scheduled episode. Bye!